I'm going to get started by creating a sketch on the right plane. To do that, you right click on the right plane, come up to the sketch button. I'm going to use the uh, mouse gestures. The mouse gestures are a way to access commands really quickly. The way that they work is you hold down the right button, the right mouse button, and you swipe across to select the gesture that you want or the uh, feature that you want. I'm going to use the line command and start at the origin and move out to the right. Now this is going to be the base of the Klein bottle and this is a straight line and what I want is to have that be a curved line and to make that a curved line really quickly what I can do is come back to where that line started and I can just come back out pick up on the geometry that's laid out for me and finish out the sketch I'm gonna do something that most people don't do when working with SOLIDWORKS and that is I'm going to leave this sketch as being underdefined. What this means is that I can drag around these components on the screen but it's also important to make sure that some of these components are locked. So <clears throat> when I drag this on the screen this will this will come in handy later on down the road you'll see what I mean um, more towards the end of the lesson. I'll exit the sketch and make that into a revolve around that point. Okay, so this is the base of the Klein bottle. The next step is to make the top portion of the Klein bottle, which will start from this face, it'll come up, it'll arc around, and then it'll come back through itself. The easiest way to do uh, or create that sort of geometry is with something or a feature called a sweep and what a sweep is is it is sort of like a an extrude that follows a path and with that said what we need is both the path and as well as the profile that's going to follow the path and both of those can be sketches so I'm going to get started by creating a sketch this one's also going to be on the right plane I'm going to back up a little bit here so you can see. Using the mouse gestures again, I'm going to pick up on that midpoint geometry, come up. This is going to be an arc, so remember, come back, swoop around. I'll end the sketch here. So, what I want to do at this point is make sure that this line is going to be going through the origin. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll add a relationship between the line and the origin so that it always goes straight through it. To do that, you hold down the control button, you select the line, you select the origin. And the relationship that I want to create is the coincident relation. Now as I take my sketch and I move it around, the line will always be going through the origin. And this is great. We, we didn't really have to do this, but this is going to be good uh, because we want to lock it down a little bit. Otherwise, there's a chance that just everything could fly off the screen, which isn't good. <clears throat> okay, so we have the path. Let's make the profile that is going to follow the path. So we'll exit that sketch and we'll create a new sketch on this face. So I'll select the face, create a sketch. The, the sketch that I want to make is actually exactly right where this edge is. So instead of creating a circle, making the circle and then adding a relationship between the edge and the circle, what I can do is use my Convert Entities tool. What Convert Entities will do is it'll take geometry that I already have, say this edge or this edge, with that outside, and it will make sketch entities out of those edges. And that's that's my um, that's my profile. Now I'm going to take that profile and extrude it along the path with a sweep. Features sweep. Select the profile. Select the path. 
that looks brilliant. The only other thing that I want to do is I want to go into the options and make sure that I remove the check mark for merge results. And what what that is doing is that is saying that this will be a separate body than this bottom portion. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to use this body to cut away this body. Okay? And I can do that um, by using something called the combined <coughs> command. And the combined command is accessible through insert, features, combine. And what I want to do is essentially subtract this body away from this body. So I'll, I'll use the uh, subtract operation. I'll select the main body, which is this one, and I'll subtract this body. Well, <clears throat> that's really, really good and all, except for I actually want to have a copy of that sweep uh, because I'm going to use that later on. Um, so one of the great things about SolidWorks is that I can go back in time. And to go back in time, I take this little bar at the bottom of the Feature Manager tree, and I roll up above Combine. And now as I add features, I'll add features directly under the bar, and <clears throat> I can move features around and stuff like this, but I can also move the bar around. And I'll, I'll end up using the Combine tool later on, but I'll just leave it there for now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of, of this body, and I'm going to make that copy of the body be in the exact same place. So we have two bodies which are overlapping in the same volume. All right, we're going to make a copy of that guy. So to do that, we're going to go to Insert, Features, Move Copy. We're going to make sure there's a check mark next to Copy. We're going to select the body that we want to copy, and then click the check mark. And this little warning pops up saying, hey, you haven't moved anything, you haven't rotated anything, are you sure you want to proceed? And yeah, we do. So click OK. Right, And one of the things that we'll notice is that that move copy feature got added in between the combine and the sweep, which is exactly what we want. We now have three bodies in our bodies folder and as I roll down and include that combine command we now have two bodies in the bodies folder and if I were to hide this guy we have the cut and we have everything that we need. I'm just gonna show that. Okay the next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hollow out these components. To do that, we have a feature called Shell. I'll do each body individually so you can see, um, you can see how it works. So I'm going to shell this out using the Shell command. We have some options here. I'm not going to get too deep into what these options mean, but what, what the options that I want are to remove some faces and I want to remove this face and remove this face and expose these two faces to the inside of the pipe and the thickness that I'm going to choose for my <clears throat> uh, shell is going to be 5 and then click OK and because I chose these two faces it opened them up and you can see down in there that this is a hollow part. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll hide this guy and I'll do the same thing to this guy. So I'll come up to the shell command and I'll select this face because I want to expo expose that face to the outside and click OK. And this is great and all, but what I really want is to actually remove this face too. I, I, don't, I don't want that face there. Okay, so what I can do is I can actually go back into that shell command by right-clicking on it, editing the feature, and I can select this face. 
and that will remove that face. So now when I do the section uh, clip, the face is removed. Okay, so I'm going to go show this body now. And I'll go back into that section clipping actually. Okay. So at this point, what I want to do is I'm going to trim away this bottom portion of the tube. And that'll just be a sketch on the right plane. I'll use my line command. And I'll just draw a real quick line coming across the bottom and exit the sketch. And what I'll do is I'll come up to my extruded cut and one of the, the neat tricks that I wanted to show you was that a line is actually a suitable um, a sketch entity to create a, an extruded cut. We don't need to have what they call a closed profile sketch in order to make a, uh, a cut. You can actually have an open profile sketch. And what it does is it chooses a side to cut and it'll cut away everything at that point. Right now the arrow is pointed upwards in the positive y direction and that needs to be flipped. So what we'll do is we'll click it and that'll flip it. And once I click OK, it'll cut away the um, this portion of the Klein bottle. OK, that's looking good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to zoom in here and I can see that right here we have some kind of dirty edges left over from the shell command. I'm just going to remove those real quick. Just create a sketch on that face. I'm going to kind of get off to the side so I can see this a little bit better. Zoom in and select that edge. This is going to be the edge that I'll use for my convert entities. By pre-selecting it and then uh, clicking convert entities, um, it just converts that entity really, really quick come up to my features and this will just be a really quick cut extrude. Nothing too special. Cut that away real quick. Okay, this is all looking really really good. And the next thing that I want to do is I actually want at this point to combine both of these bodies together. Now before when we use the combine tool, insert features combine we use the subtract command. Now what we want to do is add these two bodies together. So I'll select add, I'll select the two bodies, that one, and I'll click the green check mark. And the lines are gone, so this is one solid um, piece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fillets to this, just to make it look a little bit better. I'll right click and use my uh, mouse gestures again. I have one for fillet. I want to make a fillet on that edge and on that edge. And then another one down here. This is really more just to make it look a little bit nicer. That edge and that edge. All right. Okay. That's all looking really good. I'm going to exit the section view. And one of the reasons why I left this sketch as being underdefined was so that when I got to this stage, I could actually just move some of these components around to eyeball them to make them look the way that I want it to look. Uh, and all you do is you show the sketch, and you can move the sketch with the references that you've created. So I want to move this around, make that a little bit closer like that. I actually want to make this maybe a little bit bigger and make that a little bit fatter like that. Right, and so this is what they call direct editing. And this is one of the greatest things about SOLIDWORKS is that it has parametric design as well as direct editing capabilities. I'm going to hide these sketches and I'm going to do the same thing on these fillets here. 
And in order to do this, by the way, you need to have Instant 3D turned on. Instant 3D is on the Command Manager Features tab. Just make sure to click it, turn it on. Click on the, the fillet. You can zoom in, and there should be a little bit little bubble that you can grab and move around and just eyeball it where you want. If you want the fillet to snap to a certain value, you can hover over the scale and you can snap it to 24, say. And that looks good. And we can do the same thing on the bottom here. It's 10. Let's make it let's make it 30. All right, so that is how you make a Klein bottle.